Howdy, and welcome to Lee Reads, where I talk about the books I've been reading and enjoying lately. The banner on my channel says science fiction, fantasy, and more. So today I want to talk a little bit about the more category, specifically historical fiction. Historical fiction is something that I enjoy reading when I sort of stumble across it. But it's not something that I go out and seek more of, like with fantasy and science fiction. And I'd like that to change a little bit. I really want to highlight who my favorite author is in this genre. She's actually one of my autobi authors, and though you've seen her books on my shelf, I've never talked about her or her books before, because they can be very hard to classify, but oh so great. And that author is Susanna Kearsley. I own most of her books in physical, audiobook, and ebook format. That's how much I love them, and I reread them and re listen to them all the time. They really fit into that comfort category for me because this video is about historical fiction, which is really what you get when you read a Susanna Kearsley novel, but the main category that you could put them in is romance because there's always going to be a, a primary romantic plot, and one thing Susanna Kearsley says that she wants to guarantee her readers is there's going to be a happy ever after or happily for now, which basically defines what the romance genre is. But back to historical fiction. Susanna Kearsley used to be a museum curator and she knows how to do her research. She focuses many but not all of her stories on a particular period in history that we'll talk about and she travels to the various countries involved, gets down to primary sources, does her research, and really brings some of these historical characters to life. It's very well researched, but the history you're getting is wrapped up in a story of romance and political intrigue and, and danger and adventure, and they're just such great stories and I want more people to read them. The particular events in history that many of her novels focus on is the Jacobite uprisings, plural, I suppose, from the early 1700s. That history has to do with Mary, Queen of Scots, and her son, James, and their claim to the English throne, and how James and his family become exiled into France for a time, and they struggle to become the monarchs of England and Scotland, and never quite pull it off. And her books don't follow the nobles in the story, they follow other players, that are loyal Jacobites and are trying to make it happen. If you ha if you have an interest in that period of history, I think you would really like these novels. But the stories aren't just set in Scotland, although some of them are. Others are set in England, in Cornwall, areas of France where the exiled court was. But her stories are so multi-dimensional. It's not just historical fiction. There was always a contemporary heroine as well. So you are reading from one perspective that is contemporary. It's wrapping into the historical character. And sometimes the mechanism that she uses to accomplish uh, bringing in the historical story to the con contemporary story can be a little bit creepy. It's like um, the main character travels back in time in one of her novels, or the main character is really great at ciphers and is deciphering this woman's diary, and as you're reading it, you're going on the adventure um, of this young woman as she's trying to keep an agent, a Jacobite agent safe from the English assassins that are pursuing him. Or in another of the stories, the main character kind of has a genetic memory, so to speak. That's kind of how you're experiencing the historical storyline. So there's a twist to them where it's not straight up historical fantasy, like I'm going to read this book and it's set completely in the past. So what I really love about them is there's a relatable contemporary character and storyline happening in addition to the really interesting historical story storylines that are happening. Also a nice love story, a romance plot adjacent to all of that. Uh, Susanna Kearsley writes characters that I relate to, that you can really see yourself in. They are smart and they're hardworking and they're very brave. And the side characters that she writes, not just the love interests, but the other characters moving around these characters, are also very richly done. They don't feel flat. The worlds that she builds are very three-dimensional. So I have the books on my shelf here in the order that they were published for the ones that I have. There's two that I don't have here. She has another book coming out 
either late this year or early next year. Where to start? Well, the first one that she published was Mariana. The first one that I read is actually The Winter Sea, which may be a better starting point because although all these stories stand alone, to the careful reader you may see references to characters that have appeared in her other stories. And The Winter Sea is a good launching off point for several characters that you may see again in other places. She's really interested in a particular family and how they impacted the Jacobite cause. And if you read The Winter Sea first, it gives you a good touchstone for as members of these families come back in other ways in other stories. But there are a couple of her novels that don't have as much to do with the Jacobite uh, story. One I have on my shelf here, which is her most recent book, Bellwether. It's actually set in New York in the States. And the historical side of that story centers the French and Indian War or the Seven Years War, depending on where you're from. There's a French officer who's taken captive and he's a prisoner of war and basically is sent to live at one of these farmsteads for the remainder of the war until he can be traded out. The story follows his perspective, also the daughter of the house's perspective, and then you have the contemporary you have the com contemporary storyline where this museum curator is trying to get this old house uh, prepared to become a museum, but there's kind of like, is it haunted? What what's what is the the tragic love story that occurred here? What was that? Another one that has to do with history and archaeology is called The Shadowy Horses. Uh, it's one of her earlier works, and it is set at this this archaeological dig in northern England where our main character is an archaeologist and is kind of lured there by a colleague like, hey, you should come see this. The uh, the rich eccentric man that's funding the dig really reminds me of John from Jurassic Park. Um, and this, this conniving colleague reminds me of Adrian from The Mummy, just kind of their personality. And our main character, the archaeologist, shows up and learns that they think it's the final resting place of the lost Ninth Roman Legion who disappeared um, and it's contested wh what happened to that Ninth Legion. But the only reason that they believe that is because a little boy who lives on the property sees the ghost of a Roman sentinel. And so this eccentric old man believes the boy and is like, okay, I believe you. There's something, why would this Roman sentinel's ghost still be here? He's guarding something. It's the Ninth Legion. And that's kind of a leap of faith to stake your professional career on. So that's what the story centers on. So as you can see, there's a little bit of kind of supernatural elements that often get woven into the stories uh, that can be a little bit creepy, but the goal of the story isn't to freak you out. If I had to pick a favorite Susanna Kearsley novel, I just talked about The Shadowy Horses. I really love that one. That's the archeology span one. It just, uh, I really like the romance in there and the, the whole idea of it. I think my favorite one might be A Desperate Fortune, which is the story of this woman who is a programmer. She's really good at code breaking and, and solving ciphers. And she just gets hired by this author who has found the diary of just a common woman who was born in the court of King James in exile in France. And they're like, please, uh, why is her diary in code? Of course, there's a lot of intrigue and spies that are happening at the time. And he hires her, hires her to decipher it so they can read this diary and, and see what was the daily life of a person who grew up in this court. Come to find out, this woman didn't really stay in the court. She gets pulled in to basically assume a false identity and pretend to be the sister or a family member of this man that's being hunted by English assassins. And she is part of the cover story as this kind of non-assuming thief and his bodyguard are trying to make it from one place to another. So it ends up being a, a story of adventure. The main character of the contemporary story, the woman who's deciphering the diary, I love the journey that she's going on and I feel I can really relate to that. So in this particular story, it's deciphering a diary. It's not really supernatural, but you have the historical and the contemporary sides meeting. Anyway, I've probably rambled on long enough. If you're looking for a story where you know there's gonna be happily ever after, and wrapped up in that, there's romance, there's adventure, there is danger, history, intrigue, spying in some of the stories. There's also smuggling in some of the stories. And there's just really great characters that you get introduced to along the way. And I, I just can't speak highly enough 
of these stories. Susanna Kearsley is an auto by author for me. Her forthcoming novel, I spotted it on NetGalley and I've never hit request for an e-arc so fast in my life. So fingers crossed that they let me review that novel in advance because I just can't wait for the next story. If you are a fan of historical fiction and maybe don't read so much romance, I think that you should still try these stories because they really are gems and not enough people talk about them. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please check out Susanna Kearsley's novels and let me know in the comments below what your favorite historical fiction stories are. And don't forget to support your local library. Thanks for watching. Bye.